I'm going to finish this afternoon with a message that I've been preaching about going beyond. Lengthen your cords. And as you would remember, those of you that were here last week, I talk about just really asking God, obviously, to enlarge our lives and our area. And I talk about that to see an investment. Remember, you have to start somewhere. And I talk about your faith and how your faith and your finances should always go hand in hand. That means as my faith grows, as my finance, as God blesses me, He blesses me for a reason. What is that reason? The essence of blessing is to what? Go beyond. As God said to Abraham, I will bless you and out of your seed, out of your descendants, shall the nations of the earth be blessed. You see, God's heart is always to bless us. He will never withhold. And I was talking about this even on Wednesday as we met together on our online live group. That the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above. Okay? And the Father would never want to hold back, but the Father would always want to give. But the only thing that we need to do is we need to come to God and actually ask Him. You see, and we were talking, you know, about a situation, obviously, on Wednesday in one of the uh, families. Uh, we were taught, those of you that are, that are online, you know about that. You know, that sometimes we take without asking. And then what happens is in a way that we are not honoring, we are not having that, that respect and that honor for the person who owns that thing, whatever it may be. But all God wanted you and I to do is ask. You see, when we ask, then we can receive. I remember at one point even in my life, I was just thinking, I said, oh God, I actually don't have uh, uh, sufficient or enough, okay, to get certain things. And this wonderful friend of mine said to me, she said, don't you know that God is able to provide for you? Why don't you ask him? And I said, yeah, why not I ask him? He's my heavenly father. He's got everything. You know, so I did. I said, says, God, I would just really love to have that. And I asked the Father, praise the Lord. Just next week, someone bought me a new pair of shoes. Hallelujah. And all I did to do was just ask, you know. I can tell you, I don't really, if you, if you know me and know me well enough, I, check, I actually don't go out and buy a lot of things. Okay? I don't. Okay? But usually, i just blessed by God. And people would just buy me things. And the incredible thing is, every time when I walk around anywhere, I always find money on the ground. Okay? That is an incredible thing. You know, I, I went for a run at one point. Yeah? This is out in the, in, you know, Warren Dyke. I don't know whether you know Warren Dyke. Okay? At the back of Warren Dyke, there's a running track. And I went for a run. I mean, who would believe that? As I was going for a run, I saw $50 on the ground. You know, it's just like, I said, no, Lord, thank you, man. <laughs> you know, it's like 50 bucks, you know. <laughs> and, and, yeah, that's right. I said, God, everywhere I go, sometimes even when I'm walking somewhere, I don't know why, it's, I always find money. It could be 50 cents, it could be a dollar. Just last week I was walking and I, and I, I was going to a shopping place, thank you, yeah? I was walking up and I saw a two, I saw a two dollar coin on the ground. See? And I just picked it up and said, Lord, just thank you. This, I'll just take this and go and wash my car. You know? So everywhere I go, I'm just so blessed of God. And and I say to God all the time, God, I want to, whatever that you bless me, just I've got to always remember that the essence is for me to go beyond, to give beyond, to venture beyond, to think beyond, to think big. Okay, so if your generosity or your, if your blessings grow, I was saying this, your generosity doesn't, it will destroy your heart. Okay, I just want to recapture some of these things. So when God blesses us, please remember, please always be generous. And I was talking yesterday with somebody and I said to this person, I said, when you honor God, listen to me carefully. I said, when you honor God, put God first. Not your job. Wow, some of you be thinking, wow, yeah. No, put God first. Okay.
Okay? Because some people will be thinking, oh, if I, if I work on a certain day, maybe I get more money or this and that. No, put God first. Because God is well able to provide for you. I stand here as a living testimony of God's provision. Whenever you put God first, God will always honour you. You know, you may not be getting, you know, the $35 an hour, but you may be getting more hours, which is the difference, correct? All right? So so you honour God and you put Him first and allow the generosity, okay, to flow through you. Very, very important. Generosity will always enlarge your heart. Make sure you're generous. Imagine what will happen if we all go beyond in our giving. And I said this, you always miss the shots you don't take. And if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. God wants to stretch us very, very carefully. What you sow, you will reap. Like I was saying last week, I enjoy my blessings and I'm walking in my blessings every day. Hallelujah. Every day. I am thankful to God for what He's given. We need to get beyond the circumstances we put ourselves in and what others imposed on us. Remember what I said last week. Today's message, I want to encourage you, is get beyond the blame. Now, this happens to everybody. Sometimes, if we are not careful, what we would tend to do, we would blame other people for our situation, okay? We blame sometimes even God. If something is lost or something is taken from us, we blame, we start blaming, oh, I am what I am today because I had a terrible upbringing. Have you heard that before? I am what I am today is because someone did something to me. I was abused. I'm not saying all those things are good. I'm just saying those things happened. But what we need to do to move beyond and to get beyond the blame game. Because many people do that. Because when they start to blame somebody or they start to blame a circumstances, they start to blame a person, what happens Blindness persists in our lives. Have your Bible, okay, those of you who got your phone, turn with me, I haven't put that scripture up, but turn with me to John chapter 9. John chapter 9, we're going to read from verse 1, okay, as he passed, everybody got it? You got your Bible? Your Bible could be on your phone, most of us carry that now. This is the situation where Jesus heals a man that was born blind. Chapter 9, verse 1. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, it was not this man sinned, or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. You see, the disciples straight away, when they saw a situation, then like most people, was it because someone else did something, that's why he was blind? Was it because his parents sinned? Was it because he sinned, that's why he was blind? You see, many of us can fall into that area where we get into that blame thing. This happened to me, Lord, or this illness, or this suffering, this pain, this misery. And because of that, God, I I find it hard. It has affected my life. Lord, it has really stopped me on my tracks. Because I was, like I said, born in a certain way, or because someone treated me a certain way, because some situation, I lost my job, or something happened, God, And some of us, when we are not careful, we even blame ourselves. Many people do. You see, there's why certain people, when they lose the perspective of life, they lose the value of life, guess what they do? They tend to commit suicide. Why? Because they blame themselves. They said, I'm not good enough. 
Oh, I've got so many issues. Nobody is able to be able to help me. I can't seem to get out of this. I haven't got enough. I don't know about you, but I've heard many, many people say that to me. So why aren't you do that thing? Oh, because I haven't got enough. What is enough? Ten million is enough. Some people go ten million. The public go not enough. One million enough? Oh yeah, some people are nodding their heads. Enough. By the time you buy a house, one point one million not enough. It, what is enough? You see, because it's a perspective thing. It's like God, as His disciples said, "Is it His parents? Is it because He sinned?" And then Jesus says, "We must work the works of Him who sent me, while it is day." As night is coming, when no one can work, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed that man's eyes with the mud, and he said to him, "Go wash in the pool of Siloam." That word Siloam means scent. I am sending you to that place to get your healing. You see, God is incredible, and so He went and washed and came back seeing the neighbors and those who had seen Him before, as a beggar was saying, "Is this not the man who used to sit and beg?" Some say it is He. Others say no. But he is like him. He kept saying, "I'm the man." So they said to him, "Then how were your eyes open?" He answered, "The man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, 'Go to Siloam and wash.' So I went and washed and received my sight." They said to him, "Where is he?" He said, "I do not know." They brought. To the Pharisees, the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees again asked him how he had received his sight, and he said to them, "He had put mud on my eyes, and I washed, and I see." Some of the Pharisees say, "This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath." But others said, "How can a man who is a sinner do such?" Signs, and there was division among them. So they said again to the blind man, "What do you say about him? Since he opened your eyes, he said he is a prophet." The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, "Is your son, who you say was born blind, how then does he now see?" The parents says, "We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But now, but how he sees, we do not know, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. I like all these things because everybody is saying, 'I don't know.' You see that? Everybody is saying, 'I don't know.' Ask that person. It's like it's not me." It's not him. It's not the Pharisees. It's not this. It's not that. He said everybody is trying to shift the thing to someone else. But how he sees, we do not know. Now, do we know? Nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents say these things. Why? Because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. So, for the second time, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, "Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner." He answered, "Whether he's a sinner, I do not know." This is what I love. He says, "One thing I do know: that though I was blind." But now I see, Hallelujah. I was once blind, but now I see. Don't look to blame others when a crisis 
happens. Why? We need to look for a solution. You see, if you haven't had any type of crisis in your life, how many of you have had some crisis in your life? Okay. We all do, yeah? Well, if you haven't had one, be prepared. <laughs> okay? Because <laughs> some sort of crisis, some sort of um, adversity, some sort of thing will happen in our lives, and it happens for a reason. See, we all go through the ups and downs of life. We go through the joys as we go through the sadness. Speaking to a lady today, I had to see somebody and do some uh, stuff for them. It was, uh, it, it was quite sad because this lady said to me, I oh, just lost my husband a few weeks ago. But before that, uh, December, she says, my mom passed away. After my mom passed away, my beloved dog passed away. And after my dog passed away, my husband just passed away. And I said, oh, man, that is tough. She said, it's been a bad year for me. And I said to her, I said, you know, at the end of the day, we all still got to go on, don't we? You know? I said, life goes on. And I said, I hope that you would, you know, receive some good news this year. Then she said to me, she said, oh, my son parked his truck on the side of the road. He's a tradie. He's an apprentice in, uh, I said, what does he do? Carpentry. I said, what happened? Someone stole all his tools. Okay? From the side of the truck. and said, oh, man. I said, that's terrible. Then she said, yep. And he's got to borrow money from me to replace all his tools. Okay? So she's like, oh, one thing happened after another. And I just gave her a, some encouragement. I said, it's okay. These things obviously has happened. But, you know, you just have to find strength. You just be encouraged. And I hope that today or tomorrow and the week after, you will have a great week. And I say something to her. I say, aren't you pleased the restrictions are lifted? She said, thank God for that. I said, that's good, isn't it? That's a piece of good news for you. She said, oh, yeah. She said, because the thing is, we all have a challenge. We all have things that will happen to us. But we need to, don't blame. I've met her husband quite a few times. Uh, he's got like severe dementia. You know, it was, it was really, really bad. And I looked at him just like, I know that, you know, wow, he's, he's been pretty sick. And you see, we all can look at certain things and, and we all can put the blame on the situation or the somebody. When we constantly blame others, what happens? Blindness will persist. You see, I'm not talking about this, this physical blindness. I'm talking about the spiritual blindness. For this man, he was born blind, and Jesus says he was born blind that God's glory may be displayed. Which is, in our mindset, we're thinking, man, how does that happen? Why did God sort of allow that to happen? Because many times we would question, we would ask, we would query these sort of things. But if we can rest assured in our heart that things happen, if you can think it from God's perspective, which is very different from our perspective, okay? Because certain things happen. When you look at COVID, I mean, you look at, someone was just saying to me earlier that, who was that? Somebody had an overdose of the uh, vaccine or something. Was that right? Yeah. Where was this again? In Brisbane. You know, I'm mean, just thinking, when, when, you, when you hear that news, you're thinking, oh, better not take. All right? Anyone of you, anyone of you have, you know, probably have fallen into the, oh, we've got to be careful. How many shots are we meant to get? Two, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, two weeks apart. But some people were saying maybe longer apart just to play it safe. You know, and whatever, you know. And you hear those things, everybody is a bit cautious. And then obviously the health authorities will come in and, and give all the information to you, try to make sure everybody is okay with it. And I heard that somebody asking me just the other day, said, oh, Pastor Ray, oh, when the restrictions lift, will you, will you uh, travel again? I said, oh, I, yes, definitely. I love to travel again, you know. 
And they say, will you take the vaccine? I say, if I want to travel, I have to take the vaccine. Correct? Because they say that the vaccine, there's a passport for you to travel. Because if you don't take it, you can't travel. You know? But I mean, for me personally, I, mean, I, don't, I don't really need the vaccine. But if I have to, yeah. But God is looking to us to not put the blame on other people. Blindness will always make our focus on who? Ourselves. Blindness will always make our focus on us. You find that so true, all right? Many people that doesn't have the ability to see, you see, most of the time, because if they are inability to see, what happens? They just tend to obviously focus on themselves, on who they are, because this, this is the, the reality of life. You see, and you and I got to understand this, that God wants to open our eyes. Just like this man, he says, I don't know what happened, but I perceive that guy is a prophet who came and touched me. He spit on the ground, made mud, and rubbed on my eyes. I don't know what you guys are all talking about, but one thing I want to tell you, I was once blind, but now I see. That's his story. So if we don't go beyond and move on, there is a loss of intimacy and connectivity. If we don't get beyond the blame, whether it be in ourselves, whether it be in the situation that we find ourselves in, whether it be someone who mistreated us, whether it be, you know, that we were hurt. I think I shared on the live group uh, just a couple of weeks ago. I think I've mentioned this. I couldn't remember, couldn't remember if I mentioned here. There was a brother that was obviously in Brisbane. He attended a service once. I saw him online when I was preaching. And when I went up there uh, a few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to meet him. Uh, he owns a cafe, beautiful cafe, really good food actually. And uh, he, he, he's a very good chef. So I went and saw him. When I saw him, I felt the Lord say to me to give him a word. So I was finished waiting for him to finish the busy period of the cafe. We went and had lunch. He invited me. He said, oh, when you do come up, please come and see me in my cafe and uh, have lunch. You know, so I went there. We ordered our food. I sat down. I ate. I was just waiting for the busy period to finish. Then I went into the front counter. Then I saw him. He was still preparing some food. Then I saw him. I say, hey, bro, how are you? Then he looked at me and said, hey, Pastor Ray, when did you arrive? I said, today. <laughs> He said, oh, fantastic. So he said, oh, please sit down. Please sit down. I said, yeah, yeah, we really had something to eat. So I said, are you free now? Why don't you come and join us? So he said, oh, yeah, straight away. He dropped everything and came to the table. So me, Math, and this dear brother, these three of us sat down. We begin to share. As he opened his mouth, I tell you, I can tell this guy is an evangelist. Straight away. He said to me, he said, oh man, I've been just, you know, I, I've been talking to people about Jesus and this uh, uh, ne Nepal, Nepalese guy who works for him in the kitchen as a kitchen hand and helped to prepare food, this brother has been talking to him and sharing with him the gospel. And straight away, as he began to talk, he says, you know, I just be, I've done so many things, you know, and I've been to church, I've been doing this, but I said, what happened now? He said, oh, I just, I don't really go anymore now. I just, you know, been, it's just been disappointed. And straight away, I said to him, I said, brother, I've got a word for you. And he said, oh, what is it, pastor? And I told him, I said, my dear brother, God did not disappoint you. 
It was people that have let you down. So stop blaming God. Stop blaming the people that have let you down. He looked at me with his eyes open and his, his mouth just dropped. He says, who told you that? I said, God wanted me to give you that word. God did not disappoint you. You've been hurt, maybe by leaders. You've been hurt by people. You've been hurt by your family. And he says to me, he says, what, you know, my brothers, they are, he's Singaporean. He says, my brothers, they came and they look at me, they say to me, they say, hey, bro, why are you driving such a cheap car? He says, he's driving a, one of those Toyotas. And his brothers, all of them, they're all driving BMW, Mercedes, and Porsche, and this and that. The, brothers, the brother told him, said, hey, you're making a lot of money. Why are you driving such a cheap car? He says, I don't, want to, I don't really want to talk to them. Because <laughs> all they think about is, you know, all those things. He said, I just want to live a simple life. I just want to enjoy my life. And that's when he said to me, he says, God has blessed me so much, I don't know what to do with my money. I said, oh, I know what you can do. He says, oh, I've been blessed so much. You know, then I said, oh, please come and see me. I know what you can do with your money. All right. So anyway, long story short, I, was, I rang him, sent a message, and I said, hey, I'll be coming to Brisbane. So I love to see you. I love to catch up with you. So as soon as can, I can get there, I want to sit with you and continue to talk and to share. But I said to him, remember this. Please remember this. Do not blame God. Okay? Do not blame others. You were disappointed by other people, but God did not disappoint. He said to me, he said, Pastor, I'm going to remember that word. I say, please do. Please do. Because if you don't, you are going to be held back and you're going to be blind to the purpose of God. You're going to be blind to the things that God wants you to do. God wants you to achieve. God wants you to fulfill in your life. You're going to be blind to those things. Do not allow those things to affect you. When we are disappointed, with the outcome, it means there's something wrong with who we are. You see that? Many times, like I say, things may not happen the way we want them to happen. If things doesn't happen the way that you are expecting it to happen, what do you do? Do you keep blaming other people? Do you keep blaming God? Do you keep blaming your circumstances, or do you start to look forward? Do you get beyond? You know, things have happened in my life over the last couple of years. Painful, challenging. What do I do? Do I just go, oh man, I'm never ever going to be able to trust people again. I'm never be able to look at the situation or look at the person and goes, Oh, brother, God bless you, or I'm going to give you a piece of brick. What do you do? You say, no. You're going to be able to say, God, I cannot afford to blame that person or to blame the situation because certain things happen as well as, you know why? Because certain decisions that we make in life. We make certain decisions that have caused something to happen in our lives. And what do we do? We've got to just now let that rest. Let that sit behind and be grateful and be thankful that you and I, we are still here today. Everybody say amen. You know, we are still here. But to move forward, too often, how people cope with disappointments is by blaming others. How people cope with disappointments is by blaming others. God will use our brokenness. He will use our hurts. He will use our rejection, our circumstances 
for his glory. Like Jesus says, this man was born blind, not because he sinned, not because his parents sinned. Even his parents, his parents says, we don't know what happened to him. We know that he was born blind, but now he sees, we don't know what happened. But the thing is, God will use those things. Whatever you're going through at the moment, just remember this. Don't give in to the enemy. Don't blame, but get beyond the blame and stand strong and honor God and just say, God, even in this situation, I, I know that you will use it for your glory, that your name will be glorified, that you will be lifted up, that you will be exalted. In the situation, of this, obviously, of this blind man, you know that many times things actually get worse before it gets better. How many of you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> many times. I mean, this guy imagined that he's saying, I can't see a thing. But yet somebody applied spit and mud on my eyes. You know, I thought it's really bad enough, but yet, oh, you know, here we go. We give you a bit more, I'll give you another layer of darkness over your eyes. Many a times, our situations get worse before it gets better. And most of us, at one point in our life, this can happen. And as I look back, even the last year, from September 2019, September 2019, and I still remember the, the day when I had to make a decision. And I said, God, this thing cannot carry on. It is so difficult. It is so challenging and it's so painful that I have got to split, you know, uh, the business uh, that I was involved with and, and people that were involved with that. And things just did not work out well. And I said, God, this is, this is painful. The amount of time, the amount of energy, the amount of effort that has gone in to try and make this work. But then a decision has to be made. And I said, no, we've got to. I've got to do this. And you know what? It was painful. It was trying. You know, and, and obviously uh, and financial uh, things were coming to play. And, and I just said, God, this is, this is just incredible. But I just said to God, God, I have to do it. And it was like it became difficult. But as I look back now, I say, God, thank you. 2000 and September 2019 to then 2020, September, and now into 2021, February. In the last, what, a year and a bit, as I look back, I say, God, I want to say thank you for what happened. Because now the situation looks very different. Everything looks different. And I say, God, I thank you that I had to ride that storm. I had to ride that difficulty. And today, God, I thank you. As I look back, I say, Father, you have been faithful. And like I say, some of you heard a couple of weeks already, God has been challenging me, you know, to, in, in, from my uh, uh, life personally, to lay, to set aside, to invest, to set aside some financial uh, uh, giving. God is saying to me, I want to challenge you in 2021, you've got to increase your giving. You've got to increase your goals in giving. And I said, God, I would do that. And as I start doing that, and guess what happened? The blessings increase. Hallelujah. The blessings increase. And at the moment, I've got so much work to do that I don't even have time to sit down. I was just saying, oh God, as the increase come, Why? Because the increase comes so that I can release. Understand? So that I can release. So that I can go beyond. I'm not going to 
look back and blame all the stuff that happened or blame this person or that person and how come you didn't do this, how come you didn't do that or how come I didn't do it or da, da, everything else that we can all look at doing. But God is saying, as you learn to look beyond, live beyond, go beyond, give beyond, blame beyond, Get beyond the whole blame thing. I believe really today, this word is very, very specific. For somebody here, you know who you are. God knows who you are. Don't blame God for what happened. Don't blame God for something that happened to you, whether it be an illness whether it be a loss of a loved one, whether it be a loss of a job, or whether it be a loss of a career, whatever that is, you know, you know where you are, who you are, where you're at. And I believe the Holy Spirit is speaking to you gently today. It says, just get beyond the blame. Get beyond the blame. Because what I want for you, what I have for you, is far beyond what you can see, far beyond what you are wanting to even achieve. I don't know about you, because I'm thinking I've got, you know, in my mind, I'm seeing things, I'm envisioning, I'm asking God. Do you know, just last Saturday, by the way, we had a uh, pastor's meeting. I think some of you are aware already. We were talking and one of the pastors was saying that we got, we, we got a, a piece of land in Tonga and we are just asking God uh, to provide for us. This is in the meeting to provide a uh, million dollars so that we can get something happening to build. Then I just felt stirred in my heart and I shared to all the pastors last Saturday and I said, you know what, you're asking for one million. I'm asking for 1.5 million. They say, wow, really? I say, yes. 1.5 million. I say, God, is that enough? Everybody say, no. <laughs> but I'm asking. I say, God, I'm asking you for 1.5 million. Why? Because I've got some plans. I've got a vision to see what God wants to do in this place. Okay? I'm not going to, like I said to you, look back and say, God, oh, this happened, no, that happened, you know. And, and, and God wants to do so much more than what you and I ask, pray, or even dare to imagine. That is Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. See, for your future, if you can just look beyond the past, if you can just look beyond the hurts, look beyond the disappointments, look beyond the letdowns, look beyond all those, you know, maybe some miserable days that you had to go through, look beyond all of that. And just say, God, can I commit to you my life for the future of me and my family, for the future of my career, for the future of my plans. God, I want to commit to you. I want to look beyond. Don't let the enemy hold you back. Don't let the enemy stop you. Because once you start blaming everyone else, and some people, like I said, if I spoke to this brother, don't please don't blame God. He did not let you down. It was people. And I think that was a bit of a wake-up call for him. And I said to him, I said, man. And then he sent me a text last week. He said, Pastor, please pray for me. He is so fit. I just said, what's happening? He said, oh, I'm just feeling a bit strange in my heart. Please pray. I mean, this guy is a trained boxer. He's training people, you know, to do all these sort of boxing stuff, whatever. I mean, he's just saying, please pray for me. I said, oh, yes, I will. I pray for you. I said, in Jesus' name, Lord, just touch his heart. 
because I want to see him well. I want to see him serve the Lord. I want to see him use what God has blessed him for the advancement of the kingdom. I want him to understand that God has blessed him so that he can what? Go beyond. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, let's all stand together this afternoon as the musicians come. God wants us to walk by faith, not by sight. Because faith involves not knowing what is ahead. How many of you know what is ahead of you? <laughs> we all don't. How many of you know in the next year what's going to happen? Most of us don't. That's why it's God is saying, walk by faith, not by sight. Walk by faith. Believe the plans He has for you. So I am believing God for all of you, okay? Even as you join with me, as we believe together, we say, God, we thank you. I am personally, for the church, I am believing God. For what I said earlier. God, for your glory. Why do I? Because I'm looking. I am looking in getting a building. Hallelujah. I'm looking and I'm believing. I say, God, what is it for? It's for this generation and the generations to come. Hallelujah. For all of us, but also for the next generation. I say, God, I thank you. Come on, close your eyes. The last message for this month. Lengthen your cords. Go beyond. Get beyond the whole blame thing and start looking to God, His purpose, His plan, His destiny for your life. Give beyond what you've ever given. Because the only time that you can experience who God is is to get beyond if you're only and always staying in your current status, in your current status quo, you guess what? You never experience the power and the reality of what God can do. But once you learn to go beyond, move beyond, stretch forth, lengthen your courts, your influence, your faith and every aspect of it, you will experience to a greater degree the workings of God in your life. As Fabian leads us just in this worship song, and I want you to focus on Jesus today and just say, God, may you take me beyond. May I go beyond. Thank you, Fabian. Thank you, Lord. Forgive the way that you forgiven us, oh Lord, so we can sing a oh, Father, hallowed be your name forever. I got be exalted, kingdom come. And in us, let your will be done, our Father. In the valley of temptation, deliver us from the evil one. Lord, you reign 
And here we stand victorious In your name Together we pray Oh, Father, hallowed be your name Forever our God be exalted Kingdom come and in us let your will be done our father come on one more time our father our father hallowed be your name we worship you forever our god be exalted kingdom come and in us let your will be done our Father, we pray. Our Father, we pray. Our Father. So before you go this afternoon, why don't we just lift our hands to God and say, Lord, this year, May we be extended, Lord. May we be enlarged. May we be stretched. May we be strengthened. Lord, and may we go beyond. Hallelujah. Lord, Father, we get beyond that whole blame thing. May we, Lord, have your word in our heart. May we be, Lord, all that you want us to be. God, we pray that we will not be held back by disappointments or by pain or by hurt. Lord, that even things that others may impose on us, things that we have encountered, that we have gone through, Lord, Father, may it be even illness or, or, or just even things that have cost something to trigger something in our own heart. We pray, Father, that we will learn today that we are to go beyond, hallelujah. We are to stretch, we are to go, Father, all to all that you have purposed for us. We thank you today that you will not withhold any good things from us, but that you are more willing and able to bless, to heal, to provide, to restore, Father, to mend the broken pieces together. And we ask today, Lord, even as we lift our hands to you, we surrender. We say, God, lead us. Hallelujah. Lead us this year, Lord. May each one of us see an increase, an increase of our faith, an increase of our influence, an increase in our finance, an increase in our relationships, an increase in our health, an increase in all these areas, Lord, so that God can be glorified. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for that. Lord, there are days we may not understand to a full extent the things that have happened to us. But today, Lord, we want to rest assured that you know, we rest assured that we want to walk by faith because we don't know what is ahead of us. But you know, hallelujah, you know, Lord. And you have each one of us in the palm of your hand. And I pray for anyone here, Lord, that have been hurt or have been disappointed by things that have happened, that today, Lord, we will release those hurts. We will release those disappointments. We will release those forgiveness because we have been forgiven. Because we've been healed. We've been released to God of our pain. But I thank you. I pray today. Bless us as we go from here. And may we, Lord, this week have a great week. Enjoy and walk in the blessings you provided for us. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Everybody say, Amen.